Just a reminder, make sure you have completed the 1.5 lesson check before doing this set of notes with me. Okay, 1.6 is all about multiplying and dividing real numbers. In the most previous section, we learned about adding and subtracting, and now we're moving on to the other two operations, multiplying and dividing. So first of all, let's talk about what happens when we multiply two positives, two negatives, and one of each sign. So first, when we multiply two positives, positive times a positive, you get a positive number. When you multiply two negatives, you get a positive number. But when you multiply one of each, a positive and a negative, the negative wins. So I'd really recommend writing that little list that I just wrote up there. That will be extremely helpful. In example 1, part A, we have 12 times negative 8. Well, we have a positive and a negative. That means our answer is definitely going to be negative. So we have a negative 96 as our answer. In part B below, we have two positives. That means we're going to have a positive answer. And another way to think about 0.5 is 1 half. 24 times 1 half, which is just 24 times divided by 2. And what's half of 24? The answer is 12. In part C, we have a negative and a positive. So that means our answer is going to be negative. And we just need to multiply across. What is negative 3 times 1? Negative 3. What is 4 times 2? 8. And that's our answer, negative 3 eighths. And the last one, the product of negative 3 to the second. So that just means we're doing negative 3 times itself. Well, when we multiply two negatives together, we get a positive, And that's a positive 9 as our answer. So example 1 is done. Here's an important idea for us to remember. Every positive real number has a positive and negative square root positive and negative square root. And we need to use this symbol right here, plus or minus, in front of the radical. And you'll see me doing that in these examples below. So let's figure out what is the simplified form of negative square root of 25. Well, first of all, let's just figure out what do we square to get 25? What squared gives us 25? What times itself gives you 25? And the answer is 5. So what we can do is just replace that part right there, negative squared 25, by negative 5, and that's our answer. In part B, we have plus or minus square root of 4 over 49. So we're trying to figure this out. What squared gives us 4 over 49? What squared gives you 4? 2. What squared gives you 49? 7. So 2 sevenths to the second is 4 over 49. But wait a second, what about the negative uh, possibility? Let's try it. Negative 2 over 7 squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 7 times 7 is 49. And in, indeed, it does work. We have positive and negative 2 sevenths as our answer. Now let's move on to division. The same exact sign rules apply here. So let me just remind you the same rules as multiplication. So if we are dividing a positive divided by a positive, we get a positive. If we're dividing a negative number divided by a negative, we get a positive as well. And if we divide a positive over a negative or a negative over a positive, that just means one of each, you get a negative answer. I recommend writing that down. So here's an application problem. A skydiver's elevation changes by negative 3,600 feet in four minutes after the parachute opens. What is the average change in the skydiver's elevation each minute? Well, let's first of all identify the given. 
This skydiver's elevation is changing negative 3,600 3, feet in four minutes. So let's write that down, negative 3,600 feet in four minutes. And it's asking for how many feet is this person going in one minute. Basically what you have to do is just divide 3,600 by four. And we know we're going to get a negative answer because we have a negative on top and a positive on bottom. And we get negative 900 feet. So for every minute, this skydiver is going down 900 feet. And we can write that. And now we're on to the back side of your notes. We're going to talk about the inverse property of multiplication. So when we have a number such as negative 4 in this example, the inverse of negative 4 is going to be negative 1 fourth. Basically another way to think about this is the flip. Or another word, we're about to learn it, the reciprocal, just a little heads up. The flip or the reciprocal. So what you do, negative 4 over 1 is the original, and when you flip them, they trade places and you get negative 1 over 4. And what happens when you multiply these two numbers together, you get positive 1. So that's what always happens. The reciprocal of a non-zero real number of the form a over b is b over a. So like I just said, you flip the fraction. The product of a number and its reciprocal is 1. And when you divide the fraction, it's equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal of the fraction. So dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the flip of the reciprocal. And that's going to be especially useful in this next example. In example four, we have x over y we are dividing, but we have two fractions. So first let's set it up. Let's plug in the negative 3 fourths for the x and the negative 2 thirds for the y. And immediately I'm just going to change this to this division symbol because it'll make it much easier. So I recommend you do the same. So this is the original problem. And look at the top sentence that we just wrote down. Dividing is the same thing as multiplying by the flip of the second fraction. So the first fraction stays exactly the same, and now we're changing the division symbol to a multiplication symbol, and we are flipping the second fraction. So now we have 3 over negative 2. Let's multiply across, so we get negative 9 on top and negative 8 on bottom. Well, what happens when we divide a negative and a negative? We get a positive. So you get 9 over 8, and that is option D. And that's it for this lesson. So you can hold off for the lesson check, section 1.6, until we do the problems together during class.